Japan has a lot of roads that look like this. Bike lanes are also a rare sight, and often aren't even lanes, but rather just arrows telling cyclists where to ride. So, it may come as a surprise to you that cycling is actually a very popular form of transportation in Japan. Where do the cyclists ride if not the cycle lane or the road? I hear you ask. Well, it's simple. They ride on the footpath. Because although many roads look like this, a lot of footpaths look like this. So in Japan, people ride on the footpath just because they're wide? Well, it's not that simple. There are multiple other reasons why they ride on the footpath here instead of the road. Firstly, I'd like to clarify this mainly goes for main roads in Japan, as lots of streets are so small that there is no footpath. So the cyclists ride on the road, obviously, as there's nothing else. These roads, of course, are much more comfortable to ride on than the massive arterial roads. Their narrowness and sharp corners act as a natural traffic calming method, and they would be described as a shared street in English-speaking countries. Sometimes wider roads that could have footpaths are also essentially shared streets due to the large volume of pedestrians. But back on topic. One of the biggest reasons that riding on the footpath is often more comfortable and safe in Japan is that cars have to wait behind the pedestrian crossing. This is not the case in many countries where riding on the footpath is not common. For example, in Australia, cars can wait all the way up to where the two roads meet before turning onto the adjacent street. This means cars often block intersections for cyclists and pedestrians alike, but also makes it more likely for a car to hit you when crossing the road as the car actually enters the pedestrian crossing as the car must drive up to where the pedestrian or cyclist crosses to wait to turn onto the road. And the risk of crashes increases so much more when you're on a bike as you have less time to react than when you're walking. The line being further back in Japan makes it safer to cross the road when riding a bike and also quicker. This design allows the pedestrian right of way to continue through intersections with the exception of larger intersections where pedestrian signals interrupt it. Adding to this, the footpath is often almost or fully level with the intersection. So this means cyclists can ride faster to cross the street and also makes it more comfortable than going up and down the little ramps down to street level when the footpath is more elevated. In Japan, most intersections also have quite tight corner radiuses. Some are basically right angles. Riding faster through intersections is therefore more safe as cars have to slow down significantly before turning into the road, reducing the likelihood of major collisions between cars, pedestrians, and cyclists. Riding on the footpath compared to riding on the road does have its upsides, as cyclists interact with automobiles much less, and it also makes it easier to stop for a break or go into a store when you're already on the footpath. It does, however, also introduce many more conflicts with pedestrians than riding on the road or with separated bicycle infrastructure, which can make walking and cycling a less enjoyable experience. Most cyclists do ride slow near pedestrians and some even will get off their bike and walk in areas with heavy foot traffic. However, there are exceptions and some people ride way too fast around pedestrians so in general, in busy areas, mixing the two modes is not ideal, as cyclists cannot go at a decent speed and pedestrians need to be wary not to be hit. However, it definitely is a positive thing that riding on the footpath is legal and safe in Japan, as this gives cyclists more option on where is most comfortable for them to ride, which is especially important for children and elderly people. There is though definitely a need for more separated infrastructure, particularly on these wide arterial roads where there's a lot of foot traffic and car traffic. As without separated cycling infrastructure, there is not really any good options for cyclists to take. You can either put yourself in harm's way on the dangerous roads or ride very, very slowly and cautiously on the footpath while being an annoyance to pedestrians. Luckily, this problem is beginning to be addressed 
When I was out in Osaka filming for this video, I came across multiple in construction cycle lanes. The finished cycle lanes that I saw, however, had a uh, limited success, as it seems pedestrians often did not understand that they were in fact in a cycle lane. But hopefully with cycle lanes becoming more and more widespread, and with some better design which more clearly differentiates the footpath and the cycle lanes, the cycle lanes will be more successful in separating the two modes. All in all, Japanese cities are very fun and safe to cycle through, for the most part, as most streets are designed in a way which has a natural traffic calming effect. And on many wide arterial roads, there are also wide footpaths to ride on. The problem streets are just these wide streets with fast traffic, which don't have wide enough footpaths or the footpaths are just too busy to cycle through. Of course the wide arterials are a problem in themselves, as the traffic moves way too fast than should be acceptable in the city. Part of the reason for this, I suspect, is the lack of on-street parking, which means that wide arterials are more comfortable to drive through at high speeds, and are less slowed down by the congestion caused by cars pulling into their parking spaces. But that's not the topic of the video. Alright, well in the future I would just love to see Japan fix these problem streets for cyclists by implementing separated cycling infrastructure while also widening the footpaths and in effect narrowing the streets. It's also important to not forget to build for, for the future in areas which are densifying and seeing more pedestrian and car traffic. But overall Japan is just a very safe place to ride your bike and let's just hope they fix these problem streets in the future. And also make parking your bike cheaper and easier. I don't know what's the problem with that. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Bye.